on It's Supernatural. Meet a nurse who personally witnessed and documented miraculous healings and even witnessed the dead raised back to life. Jesus. Do angels exist? Are healing miracles real? Is there life after death? Can people get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 25 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest, Melanie Henry, was a registered nurse, and as a registered nurse, she happened to be one of these backslidden Christians, but she saw things that were unexplainable. And I imagine a lot of doctors, a lot of nurses see these things. Melanie, what did you see? Well, I saw a judge who was brain dead with three flat EEGs whom God touched, and not only was he healed, he now, went now, back. Well, well, one, one flat EEG, you're brain dead. He yeah, had three, three flat okay. EEGs. So he was dead, dead, dead. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, nobody was home. Okay. okay. And God touched him and raised him up. And he not only lived, but he went back to try hundreds of cases on the federal court circuit. Mm. And then you saw someone that actually died before your eyes. I did. I was taking care of a patient who had a brain stem stroke. She was in intensive care and um, no, didn't respond to any kind of stimulus. And while I was at her bedside, she had a cardiac arrest and her heart stopped. So brainstem stroke, her heart's not beating, she's clinically dead. I saw this woman sit up in, in the bed. After she's dead. After she's dead. And I saw a look on her face like someone who's just seen someone they love and she went, Jesus. And then she floated back to her pillow and she was gone. What effect did that have on you? I turned back to God real quick. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, I have your book here, Anointing for Healing. I love it. Thank and you. the thing that I love about it so much is in most of the cases, it wasn't an instant miracle. It was, a, it was a, literally a fight of faith. And most people aren't aware of this, that they can fight. They don't have to give up. They don't have to throw in the towel when they don't have their instant miracle. That's the truth. Most people think if it doesn't come instantly that God didn't heal them. But that's not true. Well, let's talk to one of these people in the book, Wendy Moore, who had uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh, hello, Wendy. Are you there? Hi, Sid. I'm here. Hi. Tell me about, take me from the time you found out you had Lou Gehrig's disease and uh, what you did about it. Okay. Well, I was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease April 17th of 2001. My, uh, young, or my youngest son was only four weeks old. Oh, and how tragic. Hmm. It was a devastating. I had a four-week-old baby and a two-year-old little boy, and I didn't know that my children would ever grow up to know who their mother was. Um, the doctors at University of Michigan Hospital told me I had two to five years to live. Um, that I should quit my job and, and basically for her to die. I have friends that have died from Lou Gehrig's disease. Is the, uh, does anyone survive? No, it's, it's a fatal disease. It's always mm. fatal. Uh, your nerves die off, and which supply your muscle with the, with the ability to function, and your muscles waste away, and it's a, it's a tragic, uh, terrible death. But you had an aunt that told you something you had never heard. Yep, she told me that um, that there were promises in God's word for my healing, and that I was going to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. And I uh, went went to Bible college and started learning what exactly God's word had to say concerning healing, and that healing was for me, and that Jesus was no respecter of persons, and if He'd healed one person, He'd heal me too. Now I understand, even though you didn't have your balance and you're you're, you're literally coming apart at the seams, you determined to go back to work, uh, working on an ambulance. Tell me about that. Well, I I just decided that you know faith without works is dead. And if I was going to uh, say that I was healed and know that Jesus healed me, then I was going to have to act upon that faith that I was saying with my mouth. And so I decided to go back to work full time. And everybody at work stood in faith with me, along with my uh, wonderful family. And 
um, I, I didn't want a pity party. I wanted everybody to agree with me that, that, that the ramifications and the manifestations of this healing would come. And that's exactly what I did. I carried on my life like normal. And well, I'm not two, years, two years later, what happened to you? Uh, it was oh, it was actually um, like two and a half years later. Um, I had consistently went down to University of Michigan for about six months, um, and they would always check me out. But the last time I went down, which was in um, August um, of 2003, they called me back and they said, will you come back down in October for a repeat EMG with the same doctors that did your original EMG? And so I agreed to do that. Um, and... In October, October 20th of 2003, I went back down for a repeat EMG, and uh, the doctors were walking in and out of the room and in and out of the room and asking me a lot of questions. <laughs> I can picture that scene. <laughs> yeah, and they were they said, "Did your mother ever have polio uh, when she was pregnant with you?" Or you know, she was. She, they were just asking me questions, and and they said, "You know, Wendy, you don't have ALS. We don't know what's happened here, but your nerves." Are, are they they're trying to repair themselves they said that that i look like my nerve endings look like somebody that had polio 50 years ago but they were not dying off anymore and that's what als is is that nerves are actively dying off and when they made the original diagnosis they saw nerve death within 14 days of the test and when they did the uh the emg almost three years later the nerves had stopped dying off so what do the doctors have to say about this they had to leave us alone in the room for about 30 minutes because we were just in awe. Uh, we, were, we I had never felt so close and felt God's presence so over. Uh, it was an overwhelming feeling, like God had answered our prayers exactly how how we'd asked Him to answer them. Um, you know, we stood in faith and we trusted Him and we acted upon His word, and and He He. But what he did the do Wendy? What did the doctors say? They, 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 they said it's a miracle. They said they have, the, 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 the doctor came in and told my mom and dad, you just got your daughter back. Well, we have never been able to tell anybody this, but you just got your daughter back. And we, and they were crying. They were absolutely devastated. But, but, but well, when they, don't you understand that the disease you had is a death sentence? Absolutely. I do. And I've seen so many people that have since died from Lou Gehrig's disease. And I, you know, I'm here today, you know, proclaiming the works of the Lord. Just yeah, now, like do you believe everyone can experience healing that, that, that follows what you did follow? Absolutely. You know, I, I am so glad, Wendy, that you are in the book. I'm sorry because of time. I'm going to have to say goodbye to you right now. But, uh, Melanie, there are so many just stories like this and so well documented. I can't wait to get to some of the others. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural, to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Melanie Henry, and I am so excited about these documented miracles. For instance, I've got 23 pages here uh, of a uh, man by the name of Desmond Uman, and Desmond was a four-year-old boy, and listen to this medical report. I mean, how would you have liked to have been his parents? He has a grave, and that's the word in the medical report, a grave form of autism, absolutely no involvement to the world around him. And then it goes on to say uh, he must learn to live with it, that this will never be able to heal again. Melanie, uh, th this is such an amazing story, and there's so many people that have either hopeless situations that are watching us right now or, or, or children with autism. What type of bizarre activity uh, did he do? He was uncontrollable. He rarely slept. He banged his head against the wall for hours at a time. He had obsessive, he didn't speak much, but he would go obsessively, I am Desmond, I am Desmond. He would scream, he would spit his food. The stress of trying to raise this child almost destroyed the family. And uh, we have like, you know, the before and after. Well, we have the after as he's a uh, grown up young man now, right? Uh, and I want, in his own words, for him to describe what it was like to have this disease. 